Hello YouTube, D Bodger here. So just a little while ago I received in the mail uh, two Flips Guys 75100 Vesk based ESCs. So that one hasn't been opened yet, it's still all packed up. And this one, first thing I did was pull it out of the package. So I wanted to see what was inside the shell. That's an unboxing video to, to me, pulling something out of whatever it's inside of so I can look at the circuit board. Uh, anyway, um, the shell is very thin walled uh, all the way around. All four walls are 1.5 millimeters thick. And at least on the MOSFET wall, that should be a lot thicker, you know, like three millimeters or whatever. And it's not, it's like 1.5. So the shell acting like a heat sink is, well, inadequate at best. Um, yeah, the shell is going to do a really sucky job of transferring heat away from the MOSFETs because it's just too damn thin, you know, especially on this one wall right here. It's, that's, I don't know what uh, Flips guy was thinking, but. It's just not very good design. And, and throughout this whole thing, there are various things that uh, they slipped on attention to detail. Um, the, uh, the rubber grommet here, all this really does is protect the wires from abrasion, but it's got a gaping hole around it. Um, yeah, <laughs> pretty, pretty much if you spit in the direction of this controller, water's gonna get in. Uh, the, uh, the end caps, they have no silicone seal around them, so they don't seal against the shell. And obviously, you know, water ingress right there is a significant deal. Uh, when I was wrapping on this with it all closed up, I felt something kind of bounce springy like inside. And that was because of the capacitors. So they're not secured in any way. They just simply sit here and bounce around. And this controller will absolutely see vibration in a lot of it. You know, every time you go over a bump or whatever, uh, those capacitors are going to boing, bounce around, and they're going to slowly flex and fatigue their legs and break off. In which case, well, they're not capacitors anymore, and yeah, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> you just shouldn't do that. Um, the uh, there's a little temperature sensor that is glued to the MOSFETs, and it's uh, it's got two solid core wires that go down to the circuit board, and I don't know why they show up, but there's two little tiny solder pads right there for that, and those wires again are not secured to the board in any way. So the major stress point is right where the wires solder into the board and there's nothing there to protect them from movement. So again, the temperature sensor is less prone to breaking off because there's no real stress on it and there's nothing to bounce around, but still, they should have put a little bit of something, <laughs> some kind of a glue around those wires so that they can't flex. The, uh, the phase wires and battery wires, they're all 12 aug, and since this is supposedly a 100 amp max controller, well, 12 aug is a little small for that, so they really ought to be 10 aug in here, not 12 aug. I may pull all that stuff out and replace them. I don't know yet. Uh, right here is a DC to DC converter. It looks like uh, 12 volt, 5 volts, and 3.3 volts is probably what's there. Back a little bit further underneath the three capacitors is the MOSFET drivers. And of course, here's the uh, MCU right here. There's a little um, uh, three color LED there. I don't know what the colors are because I haven't turned it on. But uh, it's got four legs on it, so that's not going to be a real RGB LED. It's just going to be like... Uh, I don't know, red, green, and blue or something. You know, three colors, but not really mixing per se, I don't guess. Uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, that shines up through this little uh, silicone plug, which, again, it moves around. It's definitely a great place for water ingress to happen that needs to be sealed up. <clears throat> that's worse, that's less worse than this one here, where this is a giant gaping hole, but still not awesome. <laughs> Uh, I do like the fact that everything is on a JST 2.0 connector, or almost everything. Um, I can't really show it because it's sort of buried under a, a capacitor, but there are three legs right here, and they are labeled D minus, D plus, and ground. And uh, they come out to one of these connectors. I think that's servo. I think that's right. Uh, anyway, it comes out to here somewhere. Yeah, that one right there. I think that's it. That's PPM. I think that's servo. I don't know. I don't know Vest that well. But uh, yeah, that one is soldered right into the board. It doesn't have a JST 2.0 connector, which is weird. At least they did put a little bit of glue around the wires so that they don't flex. Uh, uh, good for you on that one, Flips guy. Uh, really should have just been in a JST 2.0 connector and then you didn't have to do any of that stuff and you can unplug it however you want. The, uh, the CAN bus cable, so it's only two wires, which is fine when you're connecting um, one controller to another controller. But if you're going to use CAN bus for something else, like in my case, I'm going to be using a DeVega LCD, well, then I also need 5 volts and ground here. So the pins are here. They're just not in the cable. So 
on one of the controllers, I'll have to replace that with a four wire cable so I can power my DeVega LCD. Um, let's see what else I want to show you. So the uh, heat spreader on here is pretty small. I mean, it can't be very large because, you know, there's just not a lot of physical space here. But they milled off the top half of the heat spreader, which means it's going to transfer heat to the shell even less well. Um, and then also, it's not tall enough to completely fill this wall. You can see where the, where the, uh, oops, I'm off screen, where the uh, uh, thermal paste is. It's only on the smaller section, and then about half of this wall has completely got no contact with the heat spreader. So transfer of heat from the MOSFETs to the shell is inadequate because the shell is so damn weak. But then it's even worse because the heat spreader is well reduced as well. It's almost like Flips guy said, hey, let's see if we can't make a controller that's going to be good right at first or okay right at first. But then people are going to be replacing it because, well, it fails. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, not unsecured uh, capacitors, things like that. It's just failures waiting to happen. The uh, bottoms on the MOSFET legs are not pushed down all the way. They're close, but not quite all the way down. And you really want the MOSFETs all the way down onto the fat part of the legs and then solder flowing up on it because that part's rated for 75 amps. So you're going to build up the least amount of heat in the MOSFET on the fat part of the leg than you want the skinny part of the leg. So a lot of these MOSFETs, I'm going to have to come back through and touch up the bottoms of the legs with solder so that I get good flow around them uh, so you don't build up heat in the MOSFET legs. But they're close. They're really close in that regard. All right, looking at the bottom side of the board, uh, so here's battery plus and battery minus, and uh, the, where the wires come in, that's fine, but then you have these really beefy uh, bus bars right here, but they don't come up to, they don't come up to the wires. There's a big gap uh, where you're back down to the very thin uh, solder or you know uh, circuit board trace, uh, and this gap here between them and the bus. So this is a certain to fail hotspot because all the current has to jump from the from the wire over to here through this really thin copper section. So that's going to be a failure zone right there, or at least it's going to be a very hot spot in the controller. Um, I don't know why they didn't bring these bus bars right over to the wires, but they didn't. Because the bus bars are great. Those are beautiful. They're fantastic. But then they didn't bring them all the way over to the wires. So it's like, well, that was a waste of time. <laughs> why did you even bother? Um, these are uh, shunts. Uh, they say 0M50 on them. I don't know if that means 50 milliohms or whatever. I don't recognize that part number. I'd have to go look it up. But the last time I saw the shunts or a picture of, of the uh, 75100 board, they only had a single shunt on them, and now it's got three of them stacked on top of each other. So my thinking is that probably a single shunt, because these look like two watt shunts to me, uh, is that the little buggers got really hot and they probably melted themselves right off the circuit board and fell off inside the shell, in which case, well, then nothing works because there's no current path anymore. So three shunts on top of each other, which makes, you know, like more like six watts, and that's really the heat across the, uh, the shunt, not some, you know, value of how much wattage can go through the controller. Uh, that's just, you know, wattage inside the shunt itself. Um, so with three of them stacked on top of each other, that probably fixed that uh, really hot shunt issue. However, uh, looking between all three of these shunts, there is a little tiny gap between them and the copper bus. So again, you're back down to the really thin section of the circuit board, back into the shunt, and you know, so you've got a hot spot between the bus and the shunt where there's this really thin piece of copper doing all the current conduction. Um, same thing happening once you come out the other side of the shunt. Now you're back down to the circuit board before you get to the MOSFET leg by a pretty good margin there. So no reinforcing there either. So all I can say about that is, Flip Sky, you know, you missed out on some details, dudes. Uh, you know, you should be reinforcing all that stuff. Um, again, the uh, the three phase wires, so you can see that there's bare solder pad here that never got any solder on it. And uh, there's also no re reinforcing from the phase wire to the actual MOSFET leg. So this is another area that you're going to have, um, you know, excessive heat buildup uh, right around there because there's no you know, high current path from the phase wire to the actual MOSFET legs. Uh, that's going to create problems. It's going to make more heat in the MOSFETs. Uh, and it's also going to create a place where you're probably going to burn through traces. Um, just because, you know, it's uh, at this really thin trace with no reinforcing on it whatsoever. 
That's going to get nice and warm, really toasty. Uh, if all this stuff is reinforced, then all of that uh, trace on the bottom, the copper buses, things like that, they act like an additional heat sink for the MOSFET, and they draw heat out of the MOSFET legs and into the bottom of the board where it can radiate away, where there's a lot more surface area. So the fact that that's not there is like, okay, come on, guys, really, you, you should know these basic ways of mitigating heat buildup, and you didn't even apply any of them, you know, and really all it would take is just put some more damn solder in there, reinforce those traces, and they didn't do it. So, yeah, I'll be fixing that stuff. Uh, otherwise, uh, there's no conformal anywhere on the board, so water is definitely going to get inside the shell. You know, you just spit in its direction, water will get in. Um, and uh, without any conformal on the board, well, that's just going to get on the electronics and cause failures. Uh, however, looking at the actual small components, everything here is, you know, looks like all robotic placed. It's all very precisely placed. I don't see anything out of place or, you know, off crooked or whatever. So it's your typical reflow uh, board manufacturing. I don't see any problem with anything there that looks all really nicely done. Um, you know, I don't see any parts that are like crooked or high or off center or anything like that. That'll look looks fine. Um, the uh, only things I see hand soldered here is the battery wires, the phase wires, MOSFETs, uh, and capacitors. I think everything else was all machine soldered. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that even like the copper bus bars was all machine soldered. That was probably a separate process from all the parts placement is my guess. So uh, yeah, some areas of this thing are okay and some areas they just like skimped on the details, just didn't do stuff like, you know, secure the MOSFETs or the uh, capacitors and, you know, little trace add-ons to give you good current pass, things like that. Um, I'm sort of curious to see how well the controllers actually work, but probably before I even power them up, I'm going to fix some problems with them <laughs> because this is, eh, meh <laughs> in regards. Well, yeah, I uh, hope that helps somebody out. Uh, definitely... I'm looking forward to seeing how the uh, Flip Sky 7500, 7500 controller performs. Uh, this is going to be my first serious foray into the Vesk world. And these will go on a Dualtron City scooter.